Hello. Well, this is fun, isn't it? I can't tell if anybody can see me. Okay. All I can see is a <laughs> a picture of my uh, logo, which means I have obviously f this up already. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I don't know if I, if you can see this. Isn't this wonderful? So I'm going to go to Let's see. I am beer. Oh, come on, you stupid. There you go. Well, look at that. It's not actually showing what it's supposed to. Isn't wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? It's supposed to be showing my webcam right now. Well, that's why we do these things. You can hear my voice, I'm guessing. Uh... <laughs> well, there you go. This is a uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> One minute fifteen in, the old man finally figures out technology. How you doing? Uh, you can see me. You can hear me. Well, it does help if I was actually clicking on the uh, right thing to share because uh, technology, not my forte, but not when you're this old. Cheers. All right, I'm seeing you can see and hear me, which is great. Okay, this is fun. This is a first for me. Welcome to the games room, the uh, games room in cold and rainy Altadena, California. This is... Uh, this is my first stab at doing a Twitch type thing. My first stab at really being on air for a very long time. How have you been? What's been up with you? Um, I've had an event for four years in particular. Uh, yesterday was the uh, fourth anniversary of my double heart attack. Uh, that was a fun day. Um, so, yeah, four years in one day. Doing good. Um, took advantage of the pandemic to go get a... Uh, Double heart bypass. I had that done in May, um, and I'm I'm recovering. Great. Uh, touch wood. It's a uh, it's a good. Uh, it's been a, you know a good thing to do. It's very surreal to sit in the hospital um, and not have my wife be able to see me because of Corona. Um, and also, you know, at the same time we were having uh, the riots. Uh, not the riots. The BLM protests. They weren't riots. They were protests. They were valid protests. And look, you know, filthy, liberal, hands up. Um, but also the, the city of L.A. was under lockdown. Um, um, I think it was a curfew of about 8 p.m., uh, which, again, being away from my wife was uh, was a little bit disconcerting. But uh, she's a she's a tough old girl. Um, she can put up with me. She can put up with anything. Uh, but, yeah, we got through it. Spent the summer recovering. Um, had a very good very good christmas very quiet um this week i gotta say i'm gonna start off with a bit of a bummer this week if you see my twitter feed um i had some really bad news earlier in the week um my favorite uncle passed away um really good man got me into watching movies got me into reading uh really just a great great guy he was just like a father figure to me before, you know when my biological father did a runner all those years ago and really sort of like stepped in and helped looked after me for a long time until my mum remarried. Um, so yeah, the first couple of days of this week have been hard, um, but he wants everybody to push on, everybody to crack on. It's tough that I can't go back to the UK for the service because again, COVID restrictions and America being mismanaged for the last 12 months and Britain being mismanaged for the last 12 months. But it is what it is. Um, he knows he was loved. I will miss him every day. Um, and I didn't mean to start this off on a bummer, but I just wanted to get it out there. But anyway, all right. How have you guys been? I'm going to look down occasionally. I am. Oh, sound dropped again, did it? All right. Hang on. I'm, so I appreciate 
oh, okay, so maybe it's just somebody in particular. Um, so somebody in particular lost their, lost their sound. But anyway, keep me appraised. Keep me updated. Like I said, this is all new for me. This is all a grand, grand tech experiment that will probably go tits up at some point again because that's what it is. Uh, there's no intro sequence. There's no graphics. There's no music because uh, unprofessional is my middle name. So I hope you've all been well. Um, I am going to talk. Uh, I'm going to take question and answers towards the end of this episode. We're going to go for an hour max. Because, you know, I'm old. It's been a long time. I turned 50 in December. Can you believe it? I'm 50. I'm old. Um, but, yeah, I'll take some questions and we'll do a Q&A session at the end. So I'm going to go to I have list. I am kind of prepared. I'm going to talk about some games uh, because one of the things I've been able to do during the pandemic um, is play games. And thankfully, one of the things I did was actually buy uh, myself and invest in a kick-ass Alienware Aurora gaming PC. Because, look, I've always been you know, a PC guy at heart, and I've got the consoles, but um, I've always, I, you know, I needed a super spam PC. And I'm glad I got it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I am playing less console games right now. Didn't get a PS5. Haven't got an Xbox x1 the new one you know what i mean um it's kind of sucks on that one though because my xbox the replacement xbox i got to replace the original xbox i had uh went on the fritz the wireless card stopped working so and it's impossible to connect to a uh to a, a wired connection in this house because uh, the, the the ports don't exist so uh yeah my xbox is now a uh useless sack of plastic and I think that might be me done with Microsoft's consoles for the moment. I'm going to stick with uh, with my PC, and if their games come out, the 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 play on PC and Xbox, great. But um, I'm going to get myself a PS5 at some point. But in fact, let's start off with a rant. Let's start off with the console launch for the last uh, for the newest generation, because it was a cluster. And as you know, I like to swear, so I'm going to say it was a cluster fuck. Um, and look, yes, we know that the pandemic has shifted our reality so exponentially that retail doesn't exist really anymore in, in, in most places. Um, or it shouldn't exist anywhere right now. Everybody should be off work, being paid by the government while we get rid of the, get rid of the, the pandemic. But Sony and Microsoft screwed the pooch on this launch. They really did. And not only they, did they, um, Amazon, Best Buy, everybody else. And this is the standard thing that happens every four to six years. Nintendo did exactly the same thing. They overpromise and underserve. They undersupply the chain every fucking time, which means the only people to profit outside of the console makers are the gougers. And the gougers have, got, have upped their game. No more, oh, I'm going into GameStop or Best Buy or wherever to buy three consoles, two of which I'm going to sell. Now they have very smart bots that auto-buy this stuff. It's the same people who buy all the tickets from Ticketmaster because Ticketmaster doesn't really give a shit. Microsoft doesn't really give a shit. Sony doesn't give a shit. Nintendo doesn't give a shit about you. All they care about is the bottom line and ching, 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 ching. We can say we sold 400 million consoles at launch. Admittedly, 399 million of them went to the same person who is a spammer and has got a bot and he's now selling every single console for $10,000 a pop. Obviously, I exaggerate a little. I'm known for hyperbole. If uh, this is your first time watching me, hyperbole does come out of this mouth every now and again but the point i'm making is accurate sony and microsoft nintendo every time they launch a console they say oh this is going to be great we're gonna have all this stuff oh hello i am uh having performance issues am i no okay um sorry i just got a really bizarre message across my screen um yeah so let's talk about let's talk about that the fact that they over promise and under deliver and we know the production chain has been impacted by COVID. But honestly, they didn't need to launch this past year. They could have launched later on in the year. They could have launched this this spring. 
and really sort of like eased through and made sure that by Christmas of 2021, everybody who wants a console can have it. Because these consoles, the games were still doing fine, with the exception of Cyberpunk 2077, which we will get to in a minute. Oh, yes. Um, but it just seems to me that they have to launch against each other. They have to launch at a certain time of the year, and they have to do it in a way that it, it doesn't, that they uh, their back channel is not is their stock supply cannot handle demand because they want to be sold out. They want that cachet of being sold out, and it's childish and it's stupid and it doesn't need to happen anymore. Because you know, all you're doing is playing into the hands of the gougers who then take advantage of some idiot parent who's going to say, "Well, little Timmy wants an Xbox and he wants a PS5." So I'm going to pay $3,000 a pop just to get them. Well, it's like you're a fucking idiot. Little Timmy can wait for another year. Give him an iPad. Hell, buy him a PS Pro, uh, PS4 Pro and he'll be happy with that. Hell, slap him. Tell him to go get a job and pay for his own consoles. Um, so yes, this is a continuing bone of contention. And look, I... I could be salty because, oh, look, for the first time in a long time, I don't have any of the new consoles because I'm not technically, oh, I haven't been technically part of the industry. I've been an outlier, um, but I haven't missed them. I've got this beautiful PC over here. Oh, this beautiful PC. And uh, this beautiful PC lets me play games like Cyberpunk 2077. So I will say, Microsoft and Sony, sort out your game. Stop taking advantage of your customers. This is the problem with a lot of businesses especially in the games industry or in entertainment in general, um, they take advantage of the consumer because we don't have to buy stuff, but we it's in our nature to want the coolest thing. It's in our nature to want the best gaming experience. It would be nice for a console manufacturer to hit the market with a new console that has enough stock in the system so everybody can get one. Everybody who wants one initially. Because you're always going to have sales further down the line. People are going to come to it late because they, you know, they're a little more casual. Great. But also have the games. Have lots of games ready to go day one. Have some ports ready to, ready to go day one. Some up some remasters, if you will. But don't go with the bare bones minimum and then watch as your fan base tears itself apart and plays into the hands of those unscrupulous people. Also, get your systems fixed. Detect bots. Work with Amazon. Work with Best Buy. Work with Game in the UK. Work with any you know local chain or whatever to make sure that their online system is bot-proof. So you can't lose all your inventory in one go to some shady bag of shit. Because let's face it, if you bought a couple of consoles with a view of selling them on, you're a dick. You're a dick bag. That's it. Fucking hate you. Hate your type. You're basically a ticket tout. You're a scalper. You're scum. Fuck off. And I do like that a lot of people did get stuck with PS5s over the holiday season, where it's like, oh, I bought three, four, five of these, and uh, I want $1,500. Oh, now I'm taking 12 Oh, now I'm taking 8 Now I'm taking 6 Oh, my God, what am I doing? I hope they lose money. They're the equivalent of the hedge fund investors who this week have had their asses handed to them by the GameStop share debacle that's been uh, you know, pushed by the Reddit users. And you know, redistribution of wealth is a wonderful thing. Filthy socialist again here. Totally happy to see uh, the big billionaires get shafted. Tax the fuckers. Take 90% of everything they've got. And if they don't want that, put them up against the wall, I say. Put them up against the wall and use harsh language against them. Because uh, you cannot condone violence in this day and age. But anyway, that's enough uh, of my first rant. Unintended rant that just went off. So I'm going to have a little bit of tea from my Doctor Who mug. Rude and not ginger. David Tennant. His first episode, in fact. Um, all right, so let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I was on the, the fence about this. I mean, I when I saw the game at E3 in 2019, I was lucky enough to go in, sit, get a full presentation, and they gave me one of the jackets, which is still in a plastic bag in my, uh, in my closet, actually. Never used it. It's still mint and wrapped. Um, 
And I, when I watched the presentation, I thought, oh my God, this is a game I've been waiting decades to play because I grew up reading a lot of cyberpunk books and the Shadowrun books and a lot of stuff like, you know, like that. Blade Runner's a huge uh, favorite movie of mine. And, you know, that whole futuristic, near, near, uh, was it? near futuristic um, setting is always good for me. Um, I do like action RPGs. Um, I like having some le- level of um, customization available with my character and how I want them to play. And so it ticked all the boxes. And then the game was slipping again. And I started getting concerned. And it slipped a couple of times and it slipped again this year or last year. Um, and it got to the stage where I was like, do I pre-order this? Do I, I knew I was going to get it on Steam. Um, do I buy this? Do I wait and see the reviews? Uh, you know, and I was literally going back and forth up until the day it unlocked. And then I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm buying it. Boom. Bought it, installed it. Thank God I got a high end PC. I'm not going to say the game runs like a dream. But, you know, there, there's some serious frame issues in certain sections. There's uh, T-Pos in lots of sections. Still to this day, after even a couple of updates, I was playing a couple of days ago, and I was playing a mission I hadn't played before. Uh, that when I scanned, um, when I did a ping, and if you played the game, you know what I'm talking about, uh, when, you get to, when you ping to see how many bad guys are actually around the, the area, um, they light up in red and there was literally one enemy patrol guy who was just standing there in t pose and that shouldn't be happening not in a triple a game not six weeks after release um the game has a lot of flaws with regards to its performance and look my machine is pretty much top of the range with the exception of i think the graphics card which was top of the range as best as I could get uh, without paying an absolute fortune back in June of last year. Uh, and I will update it, you know, when the prices come down, but we all know the AMD and Nvidia cards, the, the super high ones have been uh, very, very chitching. Um, so when you take out the glitches, however, oh, it's a bloody good game. It's a lot of fun. The, city uh the the environment the map it's pretty big um it's full of it's full of life i mean admittedly it's a lot of the same life you can't interact with everybody but being able to talk to various fixes as you go from suburb to suburb or section of the city buying cars exploring taking different types of missions upgrading your cyber uh your, you know your cyber abilities whether it be hacking or um assault or um there's a cool a cool section which I still quite haven't figured out i mean i'm guessing it's cool under pressure but it's so badly named um so yeah it's a lot of fun i think i've probably clocked in about 120 hours on it just futzing around which is a good sign uh admittedly i haven't had much to do recently you know kind of locked down like most people i am in los angeles california which is the covid capital of the world yay go us we're number one um so yeah i've been playing it and i really enjoy it there are a couple of uh, issues outside the tech that, that just don't make sense it's a little sl- sloppy in a lot of ways and it's things that just become time consuming um the fact that when you're trying to sell multiples or, or just, you know, get rid of multiples of a, uh, of a certain thing, you hit the A button on your controller to, and it says, oh, how many do you want to sell? And then you have to press X to confirm. It does, it's just not very intuitive. It's not very friendly. Um, then the handling on the cars. It's a bit shit. Um, it makes Grand Theft Auto look like Forza, uh, especially the bikes. Oh, I mean the bikes. The bikes are fun to ride because you get into the third-person camera and you're bouncing along, and you end up taking, you know, taking a corner too fast, and you shoot off the side of a freeway, and you're getting some serious air as you go over some things, and it looks great. Don't get me wrong, um, but it is not. It is not good for uh, for handling. Um, there are a lot of glitches with regards to missions not working properly. 
uh, missions not ending properly when you've done them. The variety of the missions is good. Talking to the different fixes is good. I do wish they'd stopped asking me to buy cars because it just feels like I'm playing one big Carmax advert. Um, and I do wish, you know, I do wish you could play a little more third person. I do wish you could see your character. And I do wish you had some more customization uh, prob uh, options on your character. I mean, everything, I mean, you can change your clothes and your armor, but you can't really change anything else. Um, I mean, the idea of becoming fully cybered up sounded really good. Um, you know, I, my character has these leg implants that allow him to do, do a double jump, which is great. Uh, oh my God, PR Flack followed me. I know who that is. That's one of my oldest friends, Mr. Frary. Um, so yeah, it's one of those games that is a flawed work of art, in my opinion. It could be as good as Grand Theft Auto V. It's taken a very long time to get to that. Um, I mean, I actually started playing GTA V again last night because I wanted to see how it ran on this machine. And of course, it ran so well, it's crazy. Um, but then I feel for everybody who's had to play it on console. And I hope everybody's gone and got their refunds where applicable. Uh, and this does lead me to a little rant with regards to CD Projekt. Uh, there's no way the game should have been put forward for certification on um, Xbox One and PS4. It was unplayable. I've seen the videos. I mean, thankfully, I didn't buy it on console. But it also does call into question Sony and Microsoft's approval process. Now, I understand having you know worked at publishers that uh, you know you put your, your game into approval and you you know you come back with a, a must fix list. Now, I've worked for the bigger publishers and the smaller publishers, and I guarantee you if Cyberpunk 2077 had come from a smaller publisher and didn't have the hype behind it and the money riding on it, it would have not passed certification at Microsoft or Sony for the PS4 or the Xbox One. That's it. End of story. Um, the unfair playing field that is video games continues. Um, we all want games to do well. The game shouldn't have been shipped on any other on any other format apart from PC. That's it. It was just not ready. I mean, it was just about ready on PC. Still buggy as fuck uh, in a lot of areas. There is a diamond of a game in there. You just have to dig past the 20 layers of buggy shit to get to it. Um, I hope it comes good. I know they're still patching, but it seems to be two steps forward, one step back with every patch, they'll fix two things and break one. Um, so fingers crossed. I really love Cyberpunk 2077. It's my cup of tea, but then I'm playing it on a big ass monitor with a great surround sound system on a kick ass PC. If you're not doing that, don't bother. Stay away. Buy a Cyberpunk book. Wow, I haven't talked this long in such a long time. My throat is getting sore. I'm gonna have another cup of tea. Uh, okay. Oh, Raypad's in here as well. Oh, this is nice. I'm seeing all my old friends, which is fantastic. Oh, seeing them watching me, which is just really fantastic. Um, a lot of people who said very nice things to me when I died four years ago because my Facebook feed kicked off overnight with, uh, oh, here's what happened to you in 2017. And it's like, bah, bah, people saying nice things and... Yeah, it's a being. It's amazing to have died, not had my own funeral, but to enjoy the wake afterwards. So anyway, what else have I been playing? Um, I'm going to touch briefly, briefly on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which um, I did. Uh, I did uh, purchase when that came out because I'm, I'm a sucker for the Assassin's Creed games, and um, I've played the last few. I liked Odyssey, but I couldn't really finish it. Uh, so I wanted to give Valhalla a try. The Norse myth it really appeals to me. The fact that it was set in England um, also appealed to me. And it's... The best thing I can say about it is that it's top quality Assassin's Creed. It doesn't reinvent any of the wheels. It doesn't really do anything super new. It just does what Assassin's Creed does best, but does it in a Viking environment, if that makes sense. I mean, it has the Norse gods in it, and 
you get to go, you know, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but you get, you get to go to some really cool places. Um, the mysticism is very heavy, but it makes a change from the uh, usual Ubisoft game that involves, oh, you have to take drugs now, and now you're tripping. This time, you're having relig- religious mystic experiences. Ubisoft likes to get people to, uh, you know, dick around with the senses. Sorry, more tea. Oh, oh, Sundancer GE. Let's talk about the Outer Worlds in a minute. God, I love being able to talk to you guys again. And I do love having to, uh, you know, see what you're playing. I will definitely talk about the Outer Worlds, one of my favorite games. Um, so, yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's... It's... It's, it's, it's good. It's great. It's top quality Assassin's Creed, but it's still Assassin's Creed. And it hasn't really changed much from Odyssey. I'm glad we don't have an Assassin's Creed every year like we used to. Remember those good old days, folks? Oh my God, back in the day, it's Assassin's Creed 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, I'm glad it's it's taken a hiatus to get better and uh, you know be more polished because obviously we had some real missteps that one in France, Assassin's Creed Liberation, where they uh, liberated the uh, the idea that you could not ship a buggy game. Um, so yeah, it's great, but it's just why I'm yearning for more. I want more of Assassin's Creed. Um, there's only so much history they can mine. I would like to see maybe them go back to the beginning of Assassin's Creed, the first game, and start remastering those with regards to the current state of the engine and the current features they have, because I think that would improve. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's one of those ones that I, again I played a lot. Of, I played a lot of because it looked gorgeous, and I was having a lot. Of, you know, I was having a lot of fun, but then I just realized I was back in the grind. It became grindy very quickly. Which is a shame. Enjoyable. One and a half thumbs up. There you go. Okay, I'm actually going to go back and talk with the Outer Worlds now. Because I know it came out a little while ago, but... Fuck, that's a great game. I mean, if you... I mean, Obsidian... Obsidian, to me, have always done games with amazing narratives. And they have been... They've never been the master of their engine... However, uh, Obsidian have done some of the best writing, some of the best characters, some of the best storylines. But then you look at KOTOR 2, you look at Fallout New Vegas, like a couple of other games they've done down the years where the engines have just not been up to what they wanted to do. I mean, Fallout New Vegas came out and everybody's like, oh, what's wrong? It's so buggy. And then, it, you know, Bethesda took the time to fix it. And I still stand by, and I I, start, I I stand by this, and I have done for years. That if you have a even a mid range PC now, if you can get hold of Fallout New Vegas on uh, Steam, Game of the Year Edition or whatever, I think they're like ten bucks tops. Where it's got all the patches, all the uh, downloadable content. Fucking great game experience. Ugh. But yeah, The Outer Worlds, oh, such a fun game. I mean, it it feels like, it does feel like a spiritual uh, successor to Fallout in a lot of ways. Um, and as you know, Fallout's one of my favorite game franchises. Uh, yeah, I got that, got it on Xbox uh, Game Pass, actually. It dropped on the Game Pass. And I just played it and played it and played it all the way through the end game. Played it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And again, it's one of those things that just gets me through recovery, gets me through pandemics. Games have been a great escape for that, as they should be. Now, I know I'm lucky. I don't have to go out and work right now because recovery. Um, I mean, things have been tight. We're working, you know, we're doing a lot of things, you know, like, uh, you know, skimping on a lot of things. We made some purchases that need to be done. Um, My wife's business has gone totally kaput thanks to COVID. How can you do events in a pandemic world? Um, I know you know, I've, done, I've been doing a couple of other things, some consulting here and there, which is fun. Um, but I think this is one again, one of the reasons I want to try give this a try, see if there's a market, see if people want to watch, uh, see if people want to hit me up with, uh, you know, be very kind to subscribe. I'm going to do the show same time every week. There's going to be another couple of shows moving forward where I'm going to pop on. I might get desperate and stream a game 
just for the comedy. So you get to see exactly how shit I am at playing games. Or um, I'm also thinking about actually doing uh, a little something that's based around soccer because I love my footy. I love my Liverpool FC champions. Uh, we've had a shit January up until last night where we turned around and beat Spurs 3-1. Unfortunately, we are behind Manchester City by four points because uh, they have clicked into top form. And that's the only compliment you're going to get out of me, Ray Pad. Oh, Dally. My friend Dally is here, my co-host from the Lonely TARDIS. So, yes, uh, I'm going to start dicking around with different uh, different game op- uh, show options and just keep an eye on the schedule. And if you have any suggestions on things you'd like me to talk about, anything you'd like me to uh, cover in the future, hit me up on Twitter. Look at that. See, I managed to put my own Chiron up in the bottom. It's right there, at Night Gamer. That's me. I'm clever. Oh, I'm so old. Um, yes, so... Yeah. Um, if you got any thoughts, toss them my way. Um, yeah, toss them my way, and we, we'll talk, and we'll figure we, we can figure stuff out. Uh, I want to do stuff that you enjoy as well as me. This isn't annoyed gamer. Annoyed gamer is is annoyed gamer is dead. Uh, he did die a while back. Uh, I'm on enough meds now to make sure my blood pressure doesn't get out, it doesn't go up. But um, I do get pissed off at things. Slightly different things now, although it's nice to get up in the morning and not have all my worries and anger directed at the the government of this country. It's so nice to know that the, the adults are back in charge. Um, and look, it's not going to be perfect. we still got a long way to go. But it's nice to know that there is a hand on the tiller that is not going to send us off the end of a fucking waterfall. Uh, okay. Wow, halfway through the show already. <clears throat> I'm sorry about this. I don't have the kafifi. I just have a sore throat from talking so much. Annoyed gamer Jesus. No, 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 no. Annoyed gamer Bobby for me now. Thank you very much. Uh, let's talk about one other game that I've actually been back and playing and having a blast with. And it's a real old one. I don't know how long it's going to be around, but it's Star Wars The Old Republic. The old MMMMMMMMMO. Um, I decided to get back into it, give it a try. Glad I did. Uh, I've managed to get a bunch of different characters. I've completed a couple of character uh, um, class quest, uh, class storylines all the way through. Um, and um, yeah, I just got to say that if a game would, was primed for a reboot, or a sequel, or just a general overhaul, a la World of Warcraft has done on, se- on several occasions. Uh, this is the, this is it. I mean, the game the game's fun. The game is pure Bioware, and this the problem was that they had so many issues with the server and the subscription fee, and you know, subscri- subscription fee is still a thing. I'd rather they look at different ways and means. Maybe I know they have a free to play version that's kind of limited, but. Damn, the old republic's got some really great storylines in it. It's got some great writing. I mean, I will say that some of the writing in the old republic uh, is a great, is so good. Certainly better than the most recent trilogy of movies, as is the Mandalorian. And obviously, we'll talk a little bit about TV in a minute. Um, and Jedi Fallen Order. I hated that game, but I got to say the um, the writing and the voice acting, the characterizations, some of the best Star Wars you could get. So there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, and I would just like to say, EA, you still have this license. Obviously, it's still giving you money because there's a lot of people playing it. Let's uh, let's flip that, baby. Let's get it uh, up and running in uh, SWOTOR 2. SW Tor 2. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining in again. Wow, I'm up to 34 viewers now. This is actually, uh, I actually thought it would just be me and maybe two people. So, and those two people were great people. But I'm just saying, thank you very much. Uh, I haven't played Star Wars Squadrons yet. I haven't, but I do have the old VR system. Um, so it's, it's on the list of things to play, but I I was sucked into Cyberpunk. And it's really difficult looking, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be looking at on this fucking screen, by the way. There you go. I'm going to move the, the Twitch suite, uh, Studio Suite Beta. I moved it up on my big screen, so I'm kind of looking at you a little bit more. 
All right. Um, one last chuckle. This popped into my feed earlier this week. Capcom. Capcom and their clothing. Oy vey. It seems that Capcom uh, did this a couple of years ago with Devil May Cry, where they tried to sell a, uh, a jacket for two or $3,000. And now they're doing the same thing with um, Chris Redfield for uh, Resident Evil Village. Um, I think they missed a trick, by the way. Resident Evil Village people. That would be a game I'd pay for. Could you imagine having the village people coming at you as the zombies and the monsters? You could, and you'd have to enter YMCA as a cheat code. The new Capcom code could be YMCA. I am totally lost it. Um, so yeah, I just saw a lot of people just getting, oh, $2,000 for this, $2,000 for that, $3,000, $400 for a Claire Redfield, co uh, uh, Claire, what's her name, coat. I just got to say, people, if you don't want it, don't buy it. I tell you what, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm being awesome. I'm going to show you something. You see this coat here? This could be a Chris Redfield coat. I'm willing to sell it to a Resident Evil fan for $1,000. It's black. It's not gray. I'm not selling it. I bought that thing in next 20 odd years ago. It's one of my favorite coats. But I got to say, <coughs> it uh, what Capcom are doing just goes back to the whole price gouging. The gouging, they're taking advantage of the consumer, which a lot of game companies are doing. And and, uh, and I understand, you know, bottom lines, blah, blah, blah. But we, we are moving into a era where, yes, the cost of games, the cost to make a game has gone through the roof. You have teams all over the world working on multiple aspects all coming together, teams of 1,000, 2,000 in some cases. Um, you have engines, technology, et cetera, et cetera. And the price of games hasn't really gone up. If you think about it, I mean, I remember paying 40 quid for a Super NES game 30 years ago. 40 quid then would have been about $60 in the US and most games now are still about $60. Um, they are, you know, the rumor is that we may go to 79.99 for the next generation of games. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I do think that if we are looking at games that are of that price, given that the costs of everything have gone up, I, I will say that a lot of things will become cheaper because with retail dying and box copies dying, and physical media is dying, we, we know this, everything's being streamed. I mean, I said, oh, I mean, I've got a DVD collection in the six, seven, eight hundred, and I said I'd never buy movies on digital. Uh, I now have 110 digital movies. <clears throat> so things change, people spend money on things that are more convenient. And the digital age means that we have more, uh, you know, we can get games quicker and yeah, I'm gonna miss physical media, but the cost of goods goes down, the middleman goes down. You're now dealing with Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, or your own marketplace. Um, you don't have to deal with Amazon for video games anymore. You don't have to deal with Best Buy because those guys took a cut, as they should, because they have to make money too. And I'd like to see Maybe if those cost of goods goes down, then things that are offered go up. Games as a service is a horrible phrase, in my opinion. Um, I miss the old days where it's like you could pick and choose your DLC, your expansion packs, if you will. If you want to buy something, great. Buy it. If you don't want to buy it, then you don't have to, and you can still enjoy a game. I pay for my internet. I pay a shit ton for my internet because I need, you know, a really good stream coming in. I got a good pipe coming in, business business thing. But I'm paying, you know, $130 a month for my uh, high-end internet uh, stream coming into the house for myself. The wife, we stream everything here. That's just, it's just the way it is. Having to pay for extra things like Xbox Live and having to pay for, uh, the you know, the PlayStation Online component as well. Is something that does not sit well with me anymore. Uh, we we saw, and again, I'm going off on another tangent because that's what I do. Um, we saw last week that Microsoft 
were going to double the cost of Xbox Live Gold. And they soon backed off after the outcry. But they wanted to put people, uh, move people over to the um, Ultimate uh, Games Pass. Games Pass Ultimate. Which is good value. I have Games Pass Ultimate. I'm very lucky I have it. Um, and actually, I'm using it more on PC now, obviously, than, than Xbox, since my Xbox went kaput. Um, so I can see what they're doing, but it doesn't make it right. I really do think that Microsoft, Nintendo, sorry, Microsoft and Sony in particular, should make multiplayer free. If you pay for a game with a multiplayer component, you should be paying for it free. You, should be, you shouldn't be paying for it. It should be free or included in the cost of your game. Now, if you want to pay for additional things like, oh, this game subscription or skins, emotes, blah, 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 blah. Absolutely. But multiplayer should be included in the cost of a game. That's it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a, take a breath for a minute. Rambled on. 40 odd minutes. Leaving me 10 minutes to take questions and answers at the very end. And, um, I am going to, where's my bottle of water? <coughs> Remind me to bring the throat lozenges next time. Jesus Christ, I'm so out of shape. It's funny, I've been on a diet. I've been exercising. I've dropped some pounds, especially since Christmas, because I lived high on the hog and ate a lot of good shit. Um, but I have I never knew my voice would be the one to go. I don't even smoke anyway, anymore. Uh, four years and two days since my last cigarette. Fuck, I hate that. But they're bad for you. Spoken is bad for you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do what you want to do. It's your life. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things I have been watching recently. Uh, first up, I'm going to talk about Doctor Who. I'm going to talk about it very, very briefly because you know, as you can see by the uh, the canine of my shoulder and the uh, TARDIS fridge. Right. Oops. Wrong way. There you go. My TARDIS fridge. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Um, I'm also on a podcast called The Lonely TARDIS with two very, very smart, fun people, Dali Damofsky and Sean Norton. Um, so I advise you to check that out, by the way. If you have any interest in Doctor Who, um, oldest running sci-fi series in the world, coming up on the 60th anniversary. The um, Yeah, um, I would say check it out. I'm just going to say right now, I don't love Doctor Who anymore. And it's not because of the first female Doctor and Jodie Whittaker. She's doing a great job considering she's dealing with shit. It's the showrunner. It's the the stories. They're so banal, depressing. It's not fun. I feel like <clears throat> it's just depressing. The show is depressing to me. It's not fun for me to watch anymore. There's no joy in it. Everything's miserable. It's COVID in television form. And so instead, I'm going to talk about some shows that I actually do write, like, obviously, Mandalorian, A Given, Finished Before Christmas, Season 2, Everybody Loves It, John Favreau, good job. Um, let's talk about that ending. The last episode, and look, if you haven't seen The Mandalorian, you may want to step away for a couple of minutes, but, I mean, we're a month on from the last episode, and so I'm sure it's out, it's out there on the internet. That last bit, when you know who appears and you know whose ship flies into the docking bay, and that little bit of action. It felt like fan wankery to me. It felt a little bit too much of the fan service. There's been a lot of fan service all the way through both seasons of the fan uh, of the of the Mandalorian, but I think they've handled it really, really well. When I saw Boba Fett and Slave One for the first time, it's like, ooh, that's cool, makes sense, fits in here. But throwing in the guy, because I just narrowed it down to a guy doing the stuff after getting off his ship to do the thing and then fly off again. Just felt a bit too much. Uh, thank you, David. Um, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you for tuning in. Felt a bit too much, but I still really enjoyed it. It's a great, a great season, great show. So, Mandalorian, really good sci-fi, written right, with a bit of fun to it, and really takes care of canon. It takes care of the extended universe, 
and you know makes you can enjoy it if you're not a huge star wars fan you can enjoy it if you are that's a good thing doctor who take note the stand no the stand oh <clears throat> sorry about this <coughs> whoa i really can't talk as much as i used to cbs interactive as uh, or cbs plus whatever it's called paramount plus at the end of the month i think it's going to be called now uh redid the stand the stephen king book that in the 90s was uh, a mini series with the likes of uh, and this is you know for old people Molly, Molly Ringwald, Gary Sinise, Ray Walston, um, Rob Lowe was in it. And it was what it was. It was a two or three night. I think it was like maybe four nights, I think it aired on NBC or CBS here in the US. And it was a fun made-for-TV adaptation. No swears, no nudity, no nothing. Now, this um, CBS All Access version has been airing, started airing uh, before Christmas, and we're about six or seven episodes in, and it's different. It's certainly uh, more swears, lots of swears, lots of F-bombs, a um, little bit of nudity, a little bit of shaggy shaggy. Um, great cast on the whole. And um, I haven't read the book. The book has always been tough for me to get into. I love adaptations of Stephen King's stuff. I just can't read his books. I don't know why. It... Loved the original miniseries, loved it, chapter one and chapter two, the movies. Cannot read the fucking books, save my life. I just have no patience. But the one thing I will say about the stand, so basically the stand 2020, 2021 version, check it out, it's a lot of fun. The one issue I have is the first couple of episodes, they jump back and forth in time. And it gets really fucking confusing. Didn't need to be done. So showrunners, if you do, if you're watching this next time, don't do that. And obviously they're not watching this because why the fuck would they? But just don't do it. Don't do it. Thank you. Uh, all right. One division. And I'm I'm starting to flag now. I'm really starting to flag. One division. Um, Disney Plus. I don't know what to think about it. It's a bit slow. New episode dropped today. Haven't really watched. I haven't watched that one yet. Um, the first three episodes. Interesting. Building things up. Maybe the episode should have been longer, a la Mandalorian, to show more of the story. I'd rather have had maybe six one-hour episodes as opposed to 12, uh, 8, 9, 10 half-hour episodes. Story seems to just be a little too annexed for me. I'm hoping it picks up today. <coughs> um, and that is basically, and I'm, like I said, I'm starting to flag. I'm just going to talk about one last thing. And this has been a bugbear of mine for a long time. This week, the um, Kong vs. Godzilla, or Godzilla vs. Kong trailer dropped. I want to see this film, ever since it was announced. Loved the last two Godzilla films. Thought uh, Kong Skull Island was actually the first movie I watched after my heart attack. Went to the cinema to watch that. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. And then I watched the trailer. And realized I just watched the entire fucking film. What is it with the people in the marketing departments of when it comes to movies and TV and entertainment? Do they believe that we as a species are so fucking dim and have such low attention spans that if you don't give us the whole story out of the way, we won't come and put our money down to watch the film? It happens every time. I mean, me and the wife, we will watch, we will say, let's watch a movie. And we'll go to Amazon or <clears throat> any, you know, Apple TV or whatever. And we'll look at the trailers first. And then we'll turn to each other and say, well, we watched that fucking movie. We don't need to watch, the, uh, you know, via the trailer. We don't need to rent that. And we'll do it five or six, seven, eight, nine times. And then we'll realize we're actually having more fun watching the trailers than the actual movies because the trailers give away way too much and we never need to see them, uh, see the movies again. And I just wish that people who marketed game, uh, movies and games and TV shows knew more about foreplay. I feel really sorry for the sexual partners of these people because the, the, these people must be crap at foreplay. They don't know how to tease. They don't know how to titillate, how to turn on. 
they just got to slap it all out there right away and go go to town. It's just a bugbear. It's just a little thing that uh, has been irritating me for a while. I want to get it off, get it off my uh, off my chest. Um, ooh, on the subject of chests. All right, thirty viewers. Wow, a lot of people have got bored already. Um, look at that. You see that? Whoop! Hang on. There it is. That's my chesty scar from when they chopped me open. It's much longer. I can never wear a bikini again. It sucks. All right. Yeah, the show's starting to flag a little because I'm starting to flag a little. Let's go and have some questions and answers. If you've got any questions, I'll give you some answers. Does anybody have... There is no way, no no, no reason anybody wants to have a snapshot. Swanland, Stefan Swanland, evil. Um, that show, the wife and I watch it. I really wish that was a HBO show or a Showtime show. It feels restrained unnecessarily so. It really does. And it feels, uh, it's it's held back. It would be much better on a cable network where they can go to town on it. Uh, Will <laughs> Raypad TV, there's a Raypadia. Uh, who's a very old friend of mine. He's a Man City fan. And look, he was a Man City fan before they were bought out by the uh, human rights atrocities um, that are, you know, their owners. So he actually has been around a very long time. Um, we have a bit of a rivalry. Obviously, his team has won the Premier League a lot over the last couple of years, until last year, actually, when my team won. Um, and, of course, they've won the League Cup every year for the last four years, which is obviously, a, you know, you can't really compare with that. Unless, of course, you're talking about the uh, European Cup, which we won, and the World Club Championship, which we won. Oh, by the way, European Cup, sixth time. Man City, how many European... Trophies do you have? Yeah. Um, so, yes, will we buy a centre-back? We need a centre-back. We had uh, literally all four of our first-choice centre-backs are gone. Yes, I really do. I hope we buy somebody before Monday because uh, I really don't fancy facing your lot with uh, Jordan Henderson and Jeannie Wijnaldum at, uh, at the back. Uh, and the Super, uh, Super Cup, yes, and the Super Cup. Okay, hang on. I'm going to scroll back up some of the... Uh... Can you give us a quick <laughs> rundown of what you've been up to after you left game trailers? Well, I did that at the top of the show, I think. I mean, I um, I have done some consulting. I've done some dying. I've done some recovering. I've done some surgery. Um, I was a foster dad for a while, and then the heart attack really put the, uh, put the kibosh on that because while I was recovering, we couldn't look after a child and me. Um, which was horrible. And that's another rant for another time and another show when I talk about how overburdened the system is and underfunded the uh, foster care system is and how many kids are just not well served in LA County, which has the most kids in the system than anywhere, you know, anywhere else in the US. Um, so yeah, that's that's the Cliff Notes version. It's been a very interesting couple of years, to be honest with you. Um, done some fun things, you know. Stayed alive, stayed alive. That's the big thing. Um, okay, let's see uh, the new Batwoman. I watched the first uh, two episodes of Batwoman last season. Not for me. Not my cup of tea. Sorry. Um, I, uh, and look, I, I know I'm not, I'm not the, the target demographic for it. Um, was it Ruby Rose was the uh, was the lead? Um, I just thought she was a very wooden actress, but um, she obviously went off to do whatever she's doing. Maybe I'll catch up with it. It's bingeable, but not really. Uh, not really in DCU frame of mind. Not really enjoying much of the DCU stuff. I mean, at some point we'll talk about the Snyder Cut for Justice League. Yeah, because. Uh, when it comes to the Justice League movie, Josh Whedon was apparently the problem, which is bullshit. Let's talk about Zack Snyder at some point. Zack Snyder, two good movies to his name. Excuse me. Watchmen and 300. 
Everything else he's done is crap. And we'll talk about that another time. Uh, what do I think of Jim Sterling? Uh, I haven't really talked to Jim in a very long time. Oh, I'm getting a spam call. Spam calls. Gotta love those. Thank you, Ajit Pai and the FCC. Fuck you, bastards. Um, I haven't really watched Jim Quisition in a while. Um, I've always got a lot of time for Jim. I think we've gone on different paths. I mean, he's obviously doing his wrestling thing as well. And he's, you know, living his best life, which is good good for him. Um I, I see stuff now and again that I agree with and stuff that I don't. But, um, yeah. Nothing but love for Jim. <laughs> Am I going to do anything with Shane and Sifted? Glad you asked. Monday, I'm recording a hour-long Zoom chat with Shane for Sifted. So keep an eye out. Um, I will pimp details on Twitter when... Uh, once that happens, and I know what's going on, but yes, we're just gonna have a have a chat, shoot the shit, uh, just like old times, which is gonna be fun. All right, I'm gonna scroll down, see if any more questions. Any more? Uh, somebody asked about uh, Cobra Kai. No, I haven't watched Cobra Kai. Uh, I know it was YouTube, and now all three are on Netflix. But um, I don't know. I just enjoyed the first two Karate Kids. Um, I think you cannot top Peter Cetera and the Glory of Love from Karate Kid Two. That's it. Time capsule. I know Karate Kid 3 came along and Karate Kid 4 and the, the, the remake with Jackie Chan. Um, but no, the first two cannot top them, in my opinion. Um, I haven't seen The Watch. I have no interest in seeing The Watch. I've seen the trailers for it. I've seen the reviews for it. Um, I have too much respect for Terry Pratchett because... This is not written by him, by the way. This uh, he obviously passed a while ago. Um, this looks, uh, yeah, it looks awful. Um, can't remember if you discussed it on the podcast. Have you listened to much Big Finish? I've, I've not. Dali and Sean have listened to the Big Finish stuff. They are the ones, the expertise there. Um, that's them. When will I start a, pat- a Patreon? Is it Patreon? Patreon? Patronizing? Patreon? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm still seeing if there's an audience for this. Uh, I want to try and do this every week. And like I said, and do some, do some other bits and bobs. I want to make sure that it's funny. I've always been crap at taking money from, from the, the people who I provide a service to. Um, if you want to, if you want to subscribe and throw a subscription in my direction, I'm not going to say, say no to that. I haven't really explored the Patreon aspect. Um, Maybe when I've got enough content up and I can offer some sensible stuff that actually is enticing to people, great. Until then, <clears throat> I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. <coughs> okay, sorry about the, uh, the the cough. I don't know what's going on. After all the time in America, do you get any smarter about why Americans play football with their hands? No, I don't. It's... Uh, yeah, I still just rugby, uh, American football, basketball, baseball. All I, I what I do is I surround myself by with people uh, who actually are very knowledgeable about it, and then they can educate me on stuff. But you know, I've got a friend who sports the Lakers, and he took me to a Lakers game a couple of years ago. That was fun. Um, I have some <laughs> some very good friends who are. New England fans, I'm wondering how they're handling Tom Brady being in Tampa and back at the Super Bowl and the Patriots not doing well. Obviously, the Boston Red Sox are owned, uh, owned by Fenway Sports Group, which owns my team, Liverpool. So we have a connection there as well. Um, but I just, I don't. I've tried. I cannot get excited about American sports. I'm sorry. Too many commercial breaks. Um, just give me football. Give me rugby. That's it. Can't do esports either. Uh, how good was last night? Seeing finally seeing Liverpool win a match. Yes, it was a wonderful result. I got to say, when that when that first dislug goal went in, I uh, I thought, oh shit, here we go again. But um, the big change last night. He played Thiago right behind Bobby Firmino. Huge difference. Four, two, one, three. Worked really well. No, we just need a couple of centre backs. Uh, okay, I should give it. All right. Okay, I think that's it, um, ladies, gentlemen. 
Boys, girls. It's been an hour. An hour that I hopefully, you know, you did not feel that it's totally sucked. Um, apologies for the false start, but hey, it's all part of the joy of watching a middle-aged white man on the internet. Because look, I looked at the internet and I said, oh my God, there's way too much diversity, too many talented people who are doing really cool shit. What you need is a mediocre middle-aged white man with no discernible talent, just a mouth and an accent. And that's what I am. Maybe that's what I should call this. Maybe a mouth and an accent. Thank you for tuning in. This has been fun. This has been a lot of fun. Um, thanks for the follows. Uh, follow me on Twitter as well. Send me questions. Uh, I might just do a separate Q and A show as well. And if you have any thoughts on things you want to you want you want to see me talk about, um, and I, I want to be able to divide this up. I want to stream on a regular basis. It keeps me young to be able to talk to to, to you guys. Keeps me busy. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, uh, sooner rather than later, I can, uh, you know, start a Patreon and give you enough content uh, to justify such a thing. Because I'm certainly not going to take uh, ask anybody for money until I can deliver something that's worth worth it. Thank you, folks. Stay safe. Masks. Wear them. Distance socially between six and twenty feet. Stay safe. Just stay alive. We're going to get through this. It's been a shitty 2020. 2021, a bit of a shit, personally, but it's going to get better. And hopefully by the end of this year, we're all going to be seeing each other, hanging out, hugging, having drinks, having food. But just stay safe and take care of your loved ones, all right? I'll see you next week. Out.